So if I just explain how this scene is set up and then I'll go on to tell you what I plan to do. So here we've got this standard bright sphere with the material on it that's our foreground object and then there are two other spheres behind this. If I switch to the wireframe view, press escape and the side view, keyboard shortcut 3 and zoom back a bit. Okay here's a foreground object, here's a sphere with a volumetric material on and here's another sphere with a volumetric material on. Being careful these two spheres don't overlap because it can cause clipping issues with volumetric materials. Oh and this is a light source and the sun is a light source in this scene. So it's quite a simple scene although I've had to tilt the camera quite a long way back so I'm not seeing the horizon. Which is why we're pointing up in the sky so we can have glowing stars which is set up by having a haze effect which would show the horizon up. You'll see the horizon in a minute and see what that means. So if I switch back to my perspective camera view what I plan to do is increase the quality of this cloud, the materials generating this volumetric material, which will mean it's rather slow to render. And supposing I wanted that just as a backdrop so I can only render it once and then I could introduce other things into the foreground without having to continually re-render the background. So essentially we're capturing the entire background as an image and then going to bring it back in and drop it back into place. That's the plan. OK, so I select my nebula sphere modify the material and take the quality up to 75 which will make it rather slow to render. I'll just demonstrate that. So here we are, higher quality uh, volumetric material, slower to render. The next step then is I'm going to take my foreground object, go to the attributes and just in the general tab hide it. Hide it from view. I want to save my present camera position, that's quite an important step and then what I do now is just render this out. So I'm just going to render this out and save this image. So I'm going to pause the video at this point because it's going to take a little while, a couple of minutes, before it's fully rendered out because of increasing the quality of the volumetric cloud. I could have done the background cloud as well but you get the idea. It's just a demonstration after all. Okay, right, you should be able to see that this is nearly done. This is the final AA pass and then I'm going to save this image. And uh, I want to save it at a fairly high quality so I go File and go to export image rather than save image as. So this will give me the option to save it as Windows bitmap which is fine and just give it an appropriate name so let's call it background and then save. Okay, saved our camera position that's an important thing to do. Switch the wireframe view by hitting escape, go to side view by hitting 3, select the camera, go to the attributes and set the origin to zero and all rotation values to zero. So that's placed our camera at the origin facing overhead view, keyboard clutch to north. Okay, on the create shelf I'm going to create a 2D picture object by clicking on this little gold fella. The reason for doing that is that when I load the image by clicking on an empty square it will come in in the aspect ratio of the image. So I don't need to resize it to change the aspect ratio, it will match. An important thing to note when you click on an empty square is when you've got this dialog go straight to your image don't click outside it if you do that dialog the active window will slip behind this passive window and it will seem that Bryce has become unresponsive if you need to get that back you can alt tab back around to it so it's not it's not crashed it's just gone behind the other window so you can't get at it so select where your image is open that loads in there check out of there and you can see, uh, if I switch to the side view, that it's not quite aligned up where I need it to be to be visible in front of the camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the attributes so that it's also at the origin. And then if I go to the edit option here and this transformation tool, I can reposition it. So I need to check that I'm in either object space or world space. So I want to do it along the z-axis so it comes in front of the camera. So select that, slide it forward. Any, an arbitrary amount so you can just see it's in front of the camera. Switch the camera view, keyboard shortcut 1, and you can see what I meant about the aspect ratio. It's the right aspect ratio, but give it a quick render. You can see the materials need modifying, so it shows up. And there is the horizon. So it's the haze settings that give us the glowing uh, star effect, which is why I need to position everything in the scene up in the air so we don't see this glowing line in the scene. So to get the glowing stars you need the horizon but if you've got the horizon then it can appear in the scene so you need to move things around. That's by the by. Let's get back to the main project which is setting this up. So 
In the attributes of the 2D object, go to linking and link it to the perspective camera. This is only a temporary basis because we just want to get this in the right place in space. To do that, all I need to do is restore the saved view. So click on that and now it's in the right orientation for our scene. We've still not got any clouds in the picture. We have our old clouds, so we'll get rid of those. So I'll just select them and delete them. I'll bring my object back into view by going and unhiding it. So there we go. And you can see now that it's behind our 2D plane. So I need to move the 2D plane back. So select our 2D face and then in the reposition objects go to camera space and then if we do the Z where I can actually move it back in 2D space. So side view. We're in this camera space now so you need to be in the camera space of the, the camera you're looking through to do this. If, it, if you do it in this view it's actually moving it sideways. Just use Control Z if it uh, goes out of position. So what I was going to do was line it up <laughs> if I can so that it's clipping the sphere. That's good. So our problem is that it's not the right size, that it's actually in contact with the sphere. So I was just going to use this, if it was cutting the sphere in half, to, to point out that it's casting shadows at the moment, which is obscuring part of our sphere. So modify the material. If I just make it additive, it removes all the shadow casting and, and receive shadow and self-shadow without turning them off. And you can also see that the reason it's not showing up this image is that even though it's put the image output into ambient, it's given a diffuse instead of an ambient output. So if we just modify that round, we'll actually be able to see it. And if we switch to the camera view, keyboard shortcut one, you can see now that it's looking about right, but it's not the right size. So we can just scale that up so it fits. And you can see by the stars that you can see through it now that... Uh, whether or not it's really properly aligned and then oops, back to the camera view, move it back along the z-axis again and then just enlarge it so it's not clipping that sphere anymore. So if you want to get the stars aligned to get the scale right, you just carefully adjust it so it's just slightly larger than the square you're looking through and you'll see that the stars should more or less line up. It's not too critical because we can reuse these stars if we want to now. We can have more stars just by you know, rolling the celestial ball around and then they won't line up or you could switch them off altogether or you could have large stars and small stars by modifying the field of view. So if we pulled this out to the point where we couldn't see the horizon but we'd got more stars in the frame and then we could select these two objects and then enlarge them together so it restores our original scene. We've now got the backdrop stars that were captured with the clouds and the other stars behind those might drop stars so we've got large and small stars a few more stars might be a nice effect to go for so that is how you can use uh, the uh, 2d face option and additive to create an effect layer that then you can use it to recombine and you can see now that the render time you know, it's, it's very fast because these aren't volumetric materials anymore they're only pictures of volumetric materials so you can create whatever nebulous you like modify the materials and then capture them as 2D objects and then you can put whatever you want in front of those and keep changing it and it'll render very quickly which is handy if you're building a complex scene. This was just a simple scene to provide an example. So there you go, I hope you found that interesting and useful and that uh, you'll be able to incorporate this technique in your own Bryce renders. Cheers now.